Shalom, praise the Lord, and welcome everyone to our class on um, Kingdom Builders. Uh, hope all of you had a good weekend. Uh, we'll begin class. I'll ask uh, Francis to lead us in prayer, please. Let's all uh, pause for a for a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful time. Lord Jesus, thank you for your with us. We are going to learn about your something new about your kingdom, Lord. We will live and we will become, we will build your kingdom, Lord. Make us like us that, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the ma'am. Give the strength and the concentrate on the teaching, Lord. You will help your spirit will be with her, Lord. Thank you for everything. We are giving all glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, today we'll uh, begin um, with a new chapter. Uh, we finished uh, chapter 8 a um, week before last. Last week was a holiday. Today we look at uh, chapter 9, Kingdom Government. Okay, uh, Like we've been saying, God is king. So if he's king, he has a kingdom. Yes. And if he has a kingdom, he rules over his kingdom, which means he exercises his authority through his government that he establishes in his kingdom. Okay, so every king has a government through which he rules his kingdom, through which he exercises his authority, and he exercises his authority through his government. Uh, look at Psalm chapter 22, verse 28. What does the Bible say in Psalm chapter 22, verse 28? Can one of you read that, please? For the kingdom is the Lord, Lord's and he rules over the nations. So here it says that God rules over the nations. Even today in the world that we are living in, God is ruling over the nations. Uh, Psalm 103 verse 19. What does Psalm 103 verse 19 say? <clears throat> Psalm 101 verse 19. Psalm 103, verse 19. Now, know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us. Psalm 103, made. verse 19. The Lord has established His throne in heaven and His kingdom rules over all. Amen. So here it says that His kingdom, okay, uh, rules over all. So his kingdom, even in our present fallen world, rules over everything. Okay. So we are to recognize God's rule coming into our world today. Okay. So even as we look at situations around the world, we think that, you know, God is not in control. God is not in, uh, is not ruling. But the word of God says that his king, that we need to recognize that God's rule is coming in and through the world today. So wherever you are and whatever place you have in life, his rule is coming in and through your life. Okay. So wherever you are, Whatever place you have in life, his rule is coming through to you and into your life. So we must understand that God has placed authority structures around us because he rules in the world today. He rules in the nations. His kingdom rules over everything. And so we need to understand that God has placed authority structures, um, you know, uh, around us. And God's government comes to us, into our lives, through these authority structures that he has placed in our lives, okay? So God's government comes into our lives through these authority structures that he has placed in our lives. So God has an authority structure for all of us in every facet, in every area of our lives, okay? Whether it's concerning family, uh, whether it's concerning the local church, whether it's concerning the body of Christ, uh, the workplace, uh, the civil government, okay, in each and every area of our life, God has placed authority structures. And what must we do? We must learn to see these areas and we need to learn to see God's kingdom uh, or the kingdom of God 
coming in and through these authority structures that he has placed around us or in us. We also need to see God's rule coming in and through these authority structures that he's placed in our lives. And we must not look at these authority structures as things that we must break free from or we must rebel against or we must tear down. That is a wrong posture for us to, um, you know, take on. But we need to look at these authority structures as something that God has placed in our lives. And we need to relate to these authority structures in a very correct way. Why should we relate to these authority structures in this in a correct way? Any idea? We're saying that God has placed authority structures around us through which his government, his rule comes in and through our lives. Okay, And we saw the various authority structures that he's placed in our lives, that is family, the local church, um, the body of Christ, also the, uh, the workplace, the civil government. Now, why is it important for us to relate correctly to these authority structures that God has placed in our lives? So that his will should be done in our lives, okay? So that his blessings flow in and through those structures, okay? His blessings come through to us through these authority structures, okay? So here's how we can see God's authority structure lived out for mankind. Uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and read verse 3, verse 11 and 12. And we will see how God's authority structure is lived out for mankind through this verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3, 11 and 12. So can somebody read that, please? <coughs> Corinthians chapter 11, 3, 11 and 12. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man in the Lord. For as woman came from man, even so man also comes through woman. But all things are from God. Amen. So in this verse, uh, there are three things that uh, describe to us the authority structure. What is the first authority structure here we see in this verse? Verses? Christ is the head of man. Okay. That is one. The head of uh, woman is man. Okay. The head of Christ is God and the head of man is Christ. So three things, uh, three authority structures that is described here. The head of the woman is man. The head of man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God. Okay. Now why does it say the head of Christ is God? When Father, Son and Holy Spirit are one and they are co-equal. Okay. Okay. Uh, why do they say that? Why does it say here that the head of Christ is God? Okay, in when it comes to God releasing his authority structure or releasing his government, he says the head of Christ is the Father or head of Christ is God, which means Christ submitted himself to the Father's will and carried out the Father's will here on. Earth, which means he submitted himself to the authority structure that God had placed, which means that God is the head and Christ submitted himself uh, to the Father's will and carried out um, the Father's will here on earth. Okay, so in the same regard, on the same manner, the head of the woman is man, which means that man is not superior to woman okay because we feel look at verse 11 it says that woman came out of man just as the man came out of woman okay so it doesn't mean that man is superior to woman it means that they are just dependent on each other in the lord in the lord both of man and woman are co-equal okay and both man and woman are dependent on the Lord, but yet when it comes to God's government, the head of the woman is 
man okay so in god's authority structure or in god's government the head of the woman is man but head, head means that man is not superior to woman they both are co-equal they are dependent on uh, god both of them are dependent uh, equally on god so we must learn to understand god's authority structure because when we relate to god's authority structure uh, in a right way and we position ourselves rightly and we follow god's authority structure or god's government that he has placed in our lives we receive the blessings that god intends through it for us okay so we look at the various authority structures that god has placed in our life the first one we look at god's authority structure in the family so can somebody please read ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 wives submit to your own husbands as to lord for the husband is head of the wife as also christ is head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Amen. So here, when it comes to the home, what is God's government in the home? Or the authority structure that he's placed in the home? The head is the husband. And the wife, what should the wife do? Should walk in submission to the head. Or the wife should submit to the head, that is the husband. And yet we know that husbands being the head does not mean that they are tiny monarchs at home. Doesn't mean that they are bosses at home. It means that as head, they actually have a responsibility. Okay. So as a head, it doesn't mean that they go around bossing or they're the, they're the more tiny monarchs at home. No, as a head, they have a responsibility. So what is their responsibility? Look at this. Can somebody uh, read First Peter chapter 3 verse 7 please? First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Husbands likewise well with them with understanding giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. Amen. So here it says, thank you. He says, he wants husbands. What should the husbands do? What should the husbands do? They have understanding towards their wife. And what else should the husbands do? Give honor to their wife. Okay. So it's very strange here. Don't you think it's strange that the husbands have to give honor to the wife? When the husbands are their head, you know, the heads don't give honor to those who are below them. They only give honor to those who are above them. But here, if you look at the biblical standard, it's very unusual. Okay. God's standards are very different. In God's standard, on the biblical standard, you give honor to those who are above you and all those who are also below you. Okay. So both in, in God's kingdom, it works both ways. Um, we learn to give honor for or those in authority learn to give honor to those who are above them and also to those who are below them. So he says, give honor to your wife uh, and treat them with respect. Okay. Treat them with respect as a weaker partner. Weaker partner means what? Not spiritually weak. Okay. Physically weak. Women are physically weak compared to men. So, you know, uh, husbands have to treat their wives, be considerate to them, um, be understanding towards them, also treat them with um, respect as the weaker vessel. Okay. So we see that uh, in the uh, authority structure that God has placed in the home, even though husband and wife are co-equal in the, in the kingdom of God, both of them have equal access to the blessings of God. Both of them have equal access to every right in the kingdom of God. Both of them have equal access to the word of God, to the Holy Spirit. Every area there is equal access because we know that God is not a partial God, but in the government structure or the authority structure and the government that God has placed in the family, the head is the husband and the wife has to walk in submission to the husband, to the head. Okay. And then we look at um, the um, other components in the family. We have not only husband and wife, but we also have 
children and parents. Okay, so let's see what Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 4 says. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. Can somebody read that please? Ephesians chapter 6 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up to the training and admonition of Lord. Of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. So here now the scripture is speaking to the children. And they say, children, now here is God's government for you. So what is God's government for the children? They have to obey their parents okay when they obey their parents that is god's government coming into their lives now we it's a well-known fact that when children grow up they go to college they into career courses they learn more or they know more than their parents okay some parents may not even know how to turn on the computer how to op operate the phone how to get into gmail or you know um, instagram and all of those things so of course yes children are way smarter they learn more they know more but it says even in that situation even though you know more than your parents even in that situation we have to honor our parents honor your parents that's a full stop after that there is nothing more to say okay you still have to have regard to your parents even though you know more than them okay honor means what respect honor means what to have reverence to have fear it means to esteem very highly okay esteem very very highly to treat them with respect and to give them reverence okay so why should children honor their parents because when you do that it's god's government coming into your house okay why should husbands treat their wives with understanding compassion and respect them when we do you have god's government coming into your life you are following god's authority structure why should wives submit to their husbands and listen and obey their husbands when you do that you're bringing in you're ushering god's government that is coming into your life okay and what happens when we do that when god's authority structure is correctly placed in the family then we see god's blessing flowing into the home sometimes we always think that you know um uh, god is not blessing our home because there is some sin yes one of the sins can be because is some member in the family is not following the authority structure or the government that god has placed in the family okay so it's very important for us to recognize these authority structures that god has placed in our lives to position ourselves to do what we are supposed to do you know to esteem our parents to regard them highly to treat them well you know husbands to be considerate loving respect their wives wives to submit to their husbands when we do that you know god's government comes into our um, house and we receive god's kingdom god's kingdom come and invades into our family to our home and we receive the um, blessings okay so that is God's authority structure in the family. Any questions? Okay, we'll, if there's no questions, we'll move on. God's authority structure in the local church. Okay, so God has placed an, uh, uh, his government or his authority structure in the local church as well. Can somebody please read Acts chapter 20 verses 28 to 30, please? Acts chapter 20 verse 28 to 30. Therefore. Take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourself, men will rise up, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Amen. Thank you. So here Paul is speaking to the elders at Ephesus and he says, you know, this is what I want you to do. What does he tell the elders? What does he tell the elders? 
He says to shepherd the flock or shepherd the church, okay? Huh? Which God has purchased by his own blood, okay? Do not, um, okay? Savage bulls will not spare the, uh, the flock. What is the first thing that he tells the elders? Watch over your own life. Okay, he's saying you are elders, you are leaders, and what you need to do is to watch over your own life, you know, and also watch over that people that God has placed in the church. Why does he tell them to do this? Why do they have to watch over their own life? Because the Holy Spirit has made them overseers of the flock or the sheep that God has given to them or entrusted them. So in that regard, because the Holy Spirit has made them overseers, okay, uh, of their lives and also the lives of the flock that God has given to them, he says, I want you to watch over them. And also, what? why does he say that he has, they have to watch over the people? Or shepherd the flock? God's people, God's possession. It's the responsibility of the elders. Why should they shepherd the flock? Because they are purchased with God's own blood. Which means don't treat them lightly. You know, the people in your church, don't treat them lightly. Because why? They are God's treasured possessions they are purchased with his own blood so don't treat them uh, lightly and he says you need to be on guard okay and he says all kind if you don't do that all kinds of things will happen what kind of things will happen savage wolves will come and take prey of god's people and they, they will speak unnecessary doctrines wrong doctrines false doctrines perverse things and they will draw away the disciples after them Cells, okay, so he's telling the elders at Ephesus, Paul is saying, You got to watch over the congregation because God has put you responsible over these people, and that when you do that, that is God's government coming into the local church, okay. So that is what uh, uh, the elders or the leaders who are called by God to be overseers of the flock are supposed to do in God's authority structure, and in response, what uh, what does he say to the people? Look at um, what does scripture say to the people in the church? Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Can somebody read that, please? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. As those who must give account, let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Amen. So here it says that. You know, he's telling the people in the church, he's saying the people in the church, listen, I want you to, what should you do? What should they do? Submissive. Okay, you need to respect. You need to treat with respect. And you need to be submissive to whom? To the leadership or to those who are leading over you. Because they are watching out for yourselves. And when you do that, it is God's government coming into the local church. Okay. Um, but it does not mean that those who are in leadership can do whatever they want. Because they are in a role of leading or in the place of leadership or in responsibility. But look at what scripture says for those who are in, in, in important leadership positions or in responsibility. First uh, Peter chapter 5 verses 1 to 4. Can somebody please read First Peter chapter 5, verses 1 to 4, please? The elders who are among you, I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Uh, just one minute, sorry. Jackin, are you also reading? Uh, yeah. Oh, we can't hear the online students speaking. They are saying something. 
um, so online online students are you able to hear what the other students were reading so far from scripture yes no yes okay uh, yes we can okay Okay, thank you, Jackin. Uh, go ahead, Jackin. Please read First Peter chapter five, verses one to four. Because when you were reading, uh, Nina Santosh was also reading here, so we couldn't hear you. Yeah, please go ahead and read, Jackin. Pastor, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes. The elders who are among you, I exhort. I, who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Amen. Thank you, Jackin. So here, what does uh, Paul, uh, Peter write to the elders, he says? What does he say? They need to be shepherds of God's flock that is under their care. Okay. And what should they do? How should they shepherd them? Well, how should they shepherd them? How should they watch over them? Willingly, okay, not because they are, you know, uh, paid money or, you know, not for dishonest gain, but they are supposed to do it eagerly, with enthusiasm, with zeal, and they should not be lords over those entrusted to them, which means don't be a big boss. Okay, uh, not by compulsion, yes, not because they have to or, you know, out of compulsion, but willingly they need to, you know, take care of the flock that God has entrusted to them, not um, being, not lording over the people, not being big bosses, um, but what should they do? They should be examples to the flock, okay? So you don't see themselves as being Lord over what has been entrusted to them, but they be an example to the flock. Okay, uh, that is what leaders or elders or people in places of responsibility in the local church they should lead people by example. And what happens when the chief shepherd will appear? They will receive a crown, crown that does not fade away. Okay, so here uh, the scripture is talking about God's government in the local church when it comes to the elders or to the leaders or those in spiritual authority in the local church okay and what does it say in verse 5 it's can somebody read verse 5 again please uh, like what you so here he's talking about God's authority structure, okay? And he's saying that younger people, what should the younger people do? They must submit themselves to whom? The elders, okay? But he's also saying something more over here. He says, all of you must be submitted to one another and all of us are called to walk in humility okay so all of us are supposed to submit to one another and all of us are called to walk in humility okay i'll give you an example now suppose you are an elderly person and an older person and you are coming into church okay and you expect the younger people in the church to help you okay maybe you've forgotten your uh, communion elements you just tell a young can you please go and get me and you know, I'm younger people, they're very willing, they'll just go and bring it to you. Or can you please call this person? Or can you get me a proper chair? Or can you get me a glass of water? You know, can you get me a cup of tea? So, you know, when you ask the younger people in the church, you know, they're more than willing to, um, uh, to help you out. But that's fine, you know, and younger people do it very gladly. But, you know, it also says in this verse that all of us need to submit to to each other so i don't think if it's anything wrong if an older person 
does something in church. An older person does something in church means only younger people don't need to lay out chairs. Even the older person can go and get their chair. Or you know, an, uh, yeah, uh, an older person can you know even serve a younger person in church. So when you're doing that, you know, when an older person is doing that, they're saying that I'm submitting myself. I'm walking in humility according to what the Word of God says. It says all of you walk in humility towards one another and all of you be submitted to one another okay so what uh, walk in humility and what is he saying here in god's government in the local church you know he's saying that it's okay it's not only necessary for younger people to serve and do things it's also okay for older people to do that because all of us should walk in submission to one another and we need to walk in humility okay so in God's government in the local church, we have a pastor who is responsible. There are people in spiritual authority who are also responsible. God's people uh, in the local church are called to walk in submission and honor and reverence towards um, them, towards those in, in leadership, to those in spiritual authority. Okay, But yet those in leadership are not to abuse their positions of authority and finally all of us irrespective of our ages whoever we are we are called to walk in humility towards one another and god's gov and when we do that god's government comes into the local church so sometimes if you don't see a greater manifestation of god's glory if you don't see signs miracles and wonders happening in the local church it can also mean that people are not following the government structure or the 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 authority structure that god has placed in the local church so you see how important it is for all of us irrespective of our ages our um, you know whether we are leaders spiritual in spiritual authority or we're just people attending uh, the local church how important it is for us to recognize god's government his authority structure and position ourselves and follow it and obey it so that you know god's um, rule and reign and his presence and his power can flow through the local church. Okay. Any questions regarding um, this? Any questions? Like uh, when we are talking about this, uh, I mean, this structure and all. So this one of the thing is coming now and then like if, if some miracles or things are not happening in our church, is is that be a, a term to to not to happen any miracles or things in the church? It could be one of the reasons. There are various other reasons why that science miracles and wonders are not happening. One of this is because you know any one of them in the local church is not you know following the authority structure, the government that God has placed. It could be other reasons as well. There could be sin. There could be. Um, you know, people are not pursuing that. People are not hungry for uh, for God's uh, presence. God's, uh, uh, you know, our agendas are very totally different. So it can be various other reasons, but one of the reasons can be this as well. Yes. Um, I mean, uh, Hebrews uh, 13, 17. Uh, uh, it, uh, it was also say like uh, watch over yourself as though you must give an account like talking about elders mm -hmm. uh, so uh, like they were given uh, authority or like placed as an overseer over people of the congregation right yes so they have the responsibility over them and they have to be accountable for them so my question is like if uh, like uh, they have to give an account if they are like uh, misleading or uh, if they are responsible for some people to get lost or not taking care of people they have to give an account to god during judgment yeah they have to give an they are accountable to god yes yeah. like like uh, we know like when god comes to judge uh, he are uh, like everybody have not only then not only wait for that before all even here in the present they would you know, God would hold them accountable. Yes. You know, 
or would hold them accountable for what they are doing? Yes. Uh, Pastor, like uh, you said, um, so for the kingdom of, for, the, for God's authority to be manifested in the church and to see God's glory, uh, you said that um, that we have to uh, walk in humility and submission to one another and all that. So, uh, so the church actually has to be like that pure in order to see God's glory. Then, right? The church has to be has to be like so pure. I mean, like everyone must be in that same mindset in order for that to happen. Yes, it's not that they have to be so pure because God understands our weakness. He knows our frailties as human beings. But at least mindful of what he's uh, asking us to do, where we are and where we need to be is something that God requires of us. Some of us, some churches, God knows that they are not being taught that. The, the shepherd doesn't know. Um, they're not being taught that. They don't have the knowledge of that. So according to our knowledge, God also works. According to our level of faith, our understanding, our maturity, God works in us, right? So the pastor even doesn't know about this, then, you know, the, the congregation does not need, cannot be blamed. People don't know that God has a government and authority structure that they have to sign, and because of that, God will not withhold his blessings. No. But even if there's a basic sin that they know that they should not be sinning, but yet they're sinning, then God will hold them accountable for that. But it's not that he will not bless them or you know, he won't hear their prayer. No. According to our level of maturity and where we are, God works with us. And of course, he teaches us. Yes. But as now as a church, as we are learning and knowing, once we know it, we need to fall into place. We need to do what God wants us to do. Yes. God's authority over the family, their um, husband, husbands are sometimes literally they act like very bossy and wives are like not submissive, not because the bossy husband, otherwise also. So in that scenario, how we, I mean, how we help them, like uh, what can be, if our near, dear families are going through this stuff where wives sometimes be very arrogant, like they will not, they don't know what's the meaning of submitting. Submitting, they feel like, it's a um, them belittling. I mean, they are like they don't want to do that. Maybe ignorance. So, as a family, like how can we help? As if. Not not even unbeliever, um, maybe sometime, sometime believer only, or he knows maybe a Christian, not believer, Christian. But uh, this, uh, they don't. Know, they're thinking, okay, wives are down, one step down. You have to be like, whatever, whatever I say, you have to listen. Hmm. And wives will, in other cases, wives will be very uh, arrogant. Uh, they don't know what the meaning of you know listening. Hmm. For the for them, it is their say. Submitting to yeah. their husbands. Okay, uh, we. It's time for our break now. We'll go for our break and come back, and then we'll take on these questions. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 